Today, our scripture reading for the sermon comes from the New Testament book of Acts, chapter 8, verses 26 through 40. Then an angel of the Lord said to Philip, Get up and go towards the south, to the road that goes down from Jerusalem to Gaza. This is a wilderness road. So he got up and went. Now there was an Ethiopian eunuch, a court official of Candace, the queen of the Ethiopians. He was in charge of her entire treasury. He had come to Jerusalem to worship and was returning home. Seated in his chariot, he was reading the prophet Isaiah. Then the spirit said to Philip, go over to this chariot and join it. So Philip ran up to it and heard him reading the prophet Isaiah. He asked, do you understand what you're reading? And he replied, how can I, unless someone guides me? And he invited Philip to get in and sit beside him. Now the passage of scripture that he was reading was this. Like a sheep, he was led to the slaughter, and like a lamb silent before its shearer, so he does not open his mouth. In his humiliation, justice was denied him. Who can describe his generation? For his life is taken away from the earth. The eunuch asked Philip, about whom, may I ask you, does the prophet say this? About himself or about someone else? Then Philip began to speak, and starting with the scripture, he proclaimed to him the good news about Jesus. As they were going along the road, they came to some water. And the eunuch said, look, here is water. What is to prevent me from being baptized? He commanded the chariot to stop, and both of them, Philip and the eunuch, went down into the water, and Philip baptized him. And when they came up out of the water, the spirit of the Lord snatched Philip away. The eunuch saw him no more, and went on his way rejoicing. But Philip found himself in Atuas, and as he was passing through the region, he proclaimed the good news to all the towns until he came to Caesarea. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Gracious and loving God, we are grateful that we get to be in this place, and we are grateful that your Holy Spirit is here. Holy Spirit, have your sway. I ask that the words of my mouth, God, and the meditation of every beating heart in this space be pleasing and acceptable to you, for you are our rock and our redeemer. And we pray in the name of Christ. Amen. Well, over the past weeks, we have journeyed in the wilderness and as we traveled, we learned that God shows up for us in the wilderness. While we were stopped in the wilderness, we were reminded of the importance of remembering God's goodness in the midst of uncertainty. We've been encouraged to combat fatigue in the wilderness by taking our nap and eating our snacks so that we continue on our wilderness journey with a clear mind. And last week, we heard how important it is to have a firm foundation in who we are and whose we are as we move through the wilderness. This week, we are focusing on the work to be done in the wilderness. Even when we are in liminal spaces, going through transitions, experiencing change, or, and this is our last Sunday to say it, in that 
betwixt and between stage of life. There are always tasks that remain the same in the wilderness. The task of the church was assigned by Jesus Christ with these words found in the first chapter of Acts. And you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and all Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. And the first chapter of Acts tells us that the strength for the task came through an outpouring of the Holy Spirit. Well, that same Holy Spirit gives Philip a work assignment. Now, initially, the Holy Spirit only gives Philip directions to the work site with a declaration, get up and go towards the south to the road that goes from Jerusalem to Gaza. The narrator chimes in with, this is a wilderness road. Now, we have to assume Philip knows why he's going. Because the scripture says, so he got up and went. He doesn't ask the Holy Spirit for the particulars of the assignment. After all, Philip has seen the Holy Spirit at work in the way the word of God continues to spread and how the numbers of disciples of Jesus Christ continue to increase. Even with the arrest of the apostles, Stephen's death by stoning, and folks fleeing persecution in Jerusalem, the gospel continues to be proclaimed. It's shared in Judea. It is Philip himself who proclaims the gospel in Samaria. Perhaps Philip senses that this assignment on the wilderness road has something to do with the growth of God's kingdom. My friends, the task that Jesus Christ gave to the early church is still our task today in 2023. I am grateful. I am grateful both to Bishop Sue Hoppert Johnson and Bishop Robin Deese, for they have reminded the clergy and the laity of North Georgia that in the midst of division in the United Methodist Church, our task or mission of proclaiming the gospel has not changed, and it must not stop. At every annual conference, every clergy gathering or town hall meeting, Bishop Sue would tell us this. She would say, the world still needs to know that love and the grace and the mercy found in Jesus Christ. So don't get distracted, clergy folk. Stay on task, laity. And Bishop Deese is doing the same. Well, as United Methodist, our mission has been, and it will always be, the following. To make disciples for Jesus Christ for the transformation of the world. And the why behind it is found in paragraph 121 in the Book of Discipline. It reads, this mission is our grace-filled response to the reign of God in the world announced by Jesus. God's grace is active everywhere at all times, carrying out this purpose as revealed in the Bible. It is expressed in God's covenant with Abraham and Sarah, in the exodus of Israel from Egypt, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. It is experienced in the ongoing creation of a new people.
by the Holy Spirit. Close quote. Well, that's the why. The how? The how is found in that same paragraph. By proclaiming the good news of God's grace and by exemplifying Jesus' command to love God and neighbor, thus seeking the fulfillment of God's reign and realm in the world. You know, Johns Creek United Methodist Church may be in a wilderness of change, but we still have a beautiful ministry task to do, and we cannot afford to let the effects of a post-pandemic world or denominational struggles or staff turnover or even a flood distract us. And for the sake of this world, this world that needs hope and peace and joy and love, we have got to stay focused and continue to share the good news about Jesus Christ. I think of it this way. We've got to be the church version of a Timex watch. Johns Creek, United Methodist Church. We take a licking and keep on ticking. <laughs> or the church version of the United States Post Office. Johns Creek, United Methodist Church. Neither snow, nor rain, nor heat, nor gloom of night stays us from the swift completion of our appointed rounds. Now, Philip, Philip could have let the challenges of the church distract him. He could have let the fear of the unknown and the desire for self-preservation prevent him from engaging in ministry. He could ignore the importance of sharing the good news of Jesus even when it looks like and feels like barriers are being thrown up all around. Well, thank goodness Philip isn't distracted. He goes down that wilderness road, and on that road, Philip sees the Ethiopian eunuch traveling toward home. And the Holy Spirit tells Philip to join the Ethiopian, and he does. And what a difference Philip's obedient response to the Holy Spirit makes in his own life, in the life of the Ethiopian and for the growth of the church. So what do we learn? What do we learn that we take with us? What do we learn from the encounter and exchange between Philip and the Ethiopian that informs our sharing of the gospel? How many of you have heard this phrase, if God calls us to a task, God will equip, it for, equip us for it. Have you heard that? It was the outpouring of the Holy Spirit on the first disciples of Jesus that equipped them, emboldened them, and empowered them to proclaim the gospel in Jerusalem. It's that same Holy Spirit that equips and directs Philip to go to the wilderness and to engage with the Ethiopian. The Holy Spirit is there. The Holy Spirit works within the heart and the mind and the soul of the Ethiopian who asked to be baptized. Tradition holds that the Ethiopian carried the gospel beyond Samaria, beyond that desert, to Africa. 
And throughout the centuries, the Holy Spirit has equipped the saints to proclaim the gospel. The same Holy Spirit that empowered those first disciples gives us the strength and the ability to accomplish that most sacred task of making disciples of Jesus Christ. And that same Holy Spirit that has worked in and through Johns Creek United Methodist Church for over 35 years will continue its work, this I know for sure. And so we have to do something. We got to pay attention and we have to follow its lead. And from this passage in Acts, we also come to understand that this beautiful, life-giving news of Jesus Christ is for all people and is to be proclaimed to all people. With the outpouring of the Holy Spirit in Jerusalem at Pentecost, Christianity moved outward in the world. But it also did this. It changed the meaning of what it is to be included and to be in community. Yes. The invitation to experience the transformative power of Jesus, love, grace, and mercy is extended to all people. We are not the gatekeepers of the gospel. We have never been given authority to say who is in and who is out of the kingdom of God. Philip was not a gatekeeper, nor did he act like it. The Ethiopian that he met has prominent standing in the court of the queen of Ethiopia. He's in charge of the queen's entire treasury. However, he's a eunuch. And the physical delineation in the first century often led to being thought of as less than. Hmm. Unfortunately, the church still tells folks they're less than today. The Ethiopian man is a man of faith. He's gone to worship in Jerusalem. But as a eunuch, religious law restricted his worship in the temple. And as a Gentile, he was only able to access the temple by using the court of the Gentiles. We don't have details on his faith background or his worship experience in Jerusalem. But we do know this from the scripture. We know that he had a deep desire to understand the scripture. So much so that he invites a complete stranger to get in his chariot and guide him in understanding a passage from Isaiah. This is where Philip meets the Ethiopian at a point of need. Philip does not let any barrier, societal, religious, the man's lack of understanding, or any remaining judgmental notions that Philip might have for himself. He does not let anything stand in the way of spending time with the Ethiopian. He responds to the man's need. He shares the good news about Jesus. And it's a beautiful moment. It's a moment of being relational. 
It's a moment of showing compassion. It is a moment of being in community. This is what the Church of Jesus Christ is about. I have a question for you. Who followed the prompting of the Holy Spirit to share the story of Jesus Christ with you? Who was that? Who came alongside you and helped you grow in your understanding of the Scripture? Who challenged and encouraged you to live out your faith in Jesus Christ by their witness? In other words, who was or is your Philip? But we are called to be Philip to someone. So are we pushing aside barriers? society or our own to meet people as they are, where they are, so we can share the story of Jesus Christ with them? And are we sharing our personal story? Because that's powerful. Our personal story of knowing Jesus Christ and how knowing Jesus Christ has transformed and is transforming our lives. In verse 39, we read that following his baptism and Philip being snatched away by the Holy Spirit, which must have been a pretty awesome thing, the Ethiopian eunuch went on his way. He went on his way rejoicing. Is he rejoicing in the fact that, that Philip took time to talk with him? Is he rejoicing in knowing that the good news of Jesus Christ is for him? Is he rejoice in knowing the truth that he is a beloved child of God who is of sacred worth and included in the kingdom of God? Perhaps the Ethiopians rejoicing is the result of all three of those things. I want to leave you with some things that we know. We know that God loved the Ethiopian unconditionally, and God loves us unconditionally, and is pouring out grace and mercy on all people through the person and work of Jesus Christ. We know as a church and as individuals that we have a story to tell that transforms lives. So we have to stay focused and go to work. Go to work in the wilderness. And the wilderness, well, it can look like many things. It can look like this church. It can look like doing ministry with over 100 children at Vacation Bible School. It can look like our neighborhood, our office, a hallway at school, the grocery store, or any other place in this world where we encounter the community. We know this that we share the gospel as a response to the love we experience in knowing Christ. And in our sharing the gospel, we must engage with others in love and with compassion and respect. And we must seek and rely on the guidance of the Holy Spirit in this work in the wilderness because the Holy Spirit is with us and continues to equip and empower us. And finally, beloved, as we go into the wilderness, we go rejoicing because we have a beautiful gospel. 
and we go and we proclaim that gospel in the name of God the Creator, Jesus Christ the Redeemer, and the Holy Spirit the Sustainer. Amen.